Mutual Broadcasting System presents the first of a series of new and unusual dramatic programs written and directed by Willis Cooper and featuring Ernest Chappell. Quiet, please. made of corrugated iron sheets with a high peaked roof. It sort of hangs over the edge of the mountaintop, with nothing but the spikes of pine trees stretching all the way down to Pasadena, better than a mile below you. Do you ever get out to California? Well, if you do, go up there sometime and take a look at that little house. But look at it through the fence that surrounds it. That's far enough. Through the fence. You go off Foothill Boulevard toward Pasadena, but you turn off on Angeles Crest Highway at La Canada. Just keep on driving up here, and you'll get there. Just keep right on going. The top of Mount Wilson is the end of the highway. You ever look through a big telescope? At the sky, at night, at the things up there. Things so far away, you sprain your brain just trying to imagine how far away they are. With nothing between you and them, billions and billions of miles of nothing. I don't know what it does to you, but brother, I freeze. Listen, do you know there are holes in the sky? No, I mean it. I've seen them. There's a thing in the constellation Andromeda. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to get technical with you. Just listen. There's this thing astronomers call it the Horsehead Nebula. Do you know what it is? It's a hole. It's a great big patch of nothing. Just nothing. There aren't any stars there. It's just a hole. No, nobody knows anything about it. Astronomers look at it. They take pictures of it. Then there it stays. There it is now and tomorrow and the next day. And a million years from now. And it's been there always. Yes, it has. It's so far away that what you see now is the way it looked a billion years ago. Before there was anybody to see it, friend. And there's lots more of those places. So what's all this got to do with a little house up on top Mount Wilson? I'll tell This was quite some time ago. I'd been living in California State for several years. I had a couple of bucks. Had a nice little place near Venice. That was before the valley got to be so popular with movie people, radio comics, people like that. And it wasn't bad living alone, waking up in the middle of the night hearing the Southern Pacific lot whistle for a crossing out around Chatsworth, listening to a dog howling way out across the valley. Going back to sleep. I don't get back to sleep so easy these days. Well, these people from Cleveland were out there. Aldo Manucci and Hugh Grant. We used to be great friends, Aldo and Hugh and I. So nothing would do but they'd come to stay with me. Well, it was all right. I'd have a Dodge convertible. The boys got quite a kick out of California. That's how we came to go up to Mount Wilson that day. Aldo and Hugh had been, uh, you know, uh, looking around for out places. They had some ideas. So one day we were having breakfast, and they were looking at an automobile club bulletin. Aldo said, let's go to Mount Wilson. So we did. So we did. I've been up there once before. You know how it is in California. I knew everything. I thought I knew everything. I found out different. We were inside the big dome where the 100-inch telescope is. It's like being inside a... Giants, watch. The telescope is in the middle, a big spidery framework with ladders climbing all over it up under this dome. The tourists stand on the kind of a catwalk around the edge while the astronomer explains as much as he thinks the Apollonacos will understand. There were just a few of us that day standing close to a little kind of pulpit, listening with our mouths open. 
Well, it is like a pulpit. I got to thinking that day how the astronomer looked like a priest up there. Nice old white-haired fellow like a priest. And I was thinking he was talking about the heavens, too. I'd seen it all before, but my mouth was as wide open as you now, though. And the Earth is moving through space, too. It moves around the sun at the rate of about... Eighteen and a half miles per second. So therefore, you see, we must, in order to keep this telescope focused accurately on the celestial objects we are observing, neutralize those motions mechanically. The telescope itself, as you will observe, is controllable in any direction by this motor. Notice the motion of the telescope. And the final movement, the rotation of the entire dome, exactly synchronized with the speed of the Earth through space. What do the shuttle about this? Look at, look across. Look outside. We, we ain't moving. The sky's gone by. Look at you. I see it. It's an optical illusion, Aldo. No, it's not an optical illusion. In relation to space, this spot we are on is standing still. Through these motions here in the dome, the mirror of the telescope is kept aimed exactly at one spot far out in space. What's space, mister? It's nothing. What about the air? There are a few miles of air, my friend, and then nothing. Perfect. Well, stars... Yes, stars. Yes. And the places where there are no stars. My skin twitched a little when he said that. The places where there are no stars. Did yours? Well, the show was over. We went outside into the sunlight. We walked across the long wooden bridge. There's a deep gully in front of the dome. And down a little path past the thing they call a coelostat. A small dome on legs about a hundred feet high. The thing they study the sun and sunspots and things like that with. That was quiet up there along toward the middle of the afternoon. There was a chill in the air. We were just talking. It's an odd place and you get kind of impressed. The people impress you. The astronomy. They live up there all by themselves. They look at the sky and see things. You always get the feeling they know a lot more than they're telling you. Like uh, doctors. Like priests, I guess. Oh, I said that, didn't I? Well, that's what they like. The path leads through the woods. The biggest live oaks you ever saw leads through the woods over to the old hotel. So I said, hey, how about a beer before we start down, huh? A beer. That's for me. Can't get hard liquor up here, Ross? No, I don't think so. Anyway, I wouldn't want to drink, not with all that mountain road ahead of me. No, sir. Don't take no drink, Ross. I don't want to ride that road that nobody's had a drink of liquor. Maybe you uh, shouldn't have a beer, even. Oh, wait a minute. Beer won't hurt me. Hey, what's this fence for? Huh? Oh, I never noticed that before. That's yeah, quite a fence. I have a hard time getting over that. What would you want to get over it for? I don't know. What do you suppose is on the other side where they got this heavy fence? I don't see anything. Except that little house out there on the hill. Yeah. Funny looking place. The fence goes right around it. Ain't got a gate? No, oh, come on. Let's get a beer. No, I want to look at this, Ross. Probably they got something valuable in there. Sure, scientific instruments or something. This place is all full of that stuff. Hey, look. Sign. Huh? Where? Here. Oh, come on. Now, oh, wait. What's it say? The public is forbidden to pass beyond this fence under severe penalty. Hello? Yeah. What do you suppose they got in that place? Don't know. I don't care. Hey, there's a door up at the end of that trestle. Maybe we could get back and get in through that other shed where the trestle stops, huh? Hey, what do you want to go in there for? Oh, come on, we got to get going. Oh, I'm just curious. You know what I mean. The place might come in handy. Oh, yeah. See? Especially if they keep everybody out like this. Well, the thing must be full of stuff you like. Ross said scientific stuff. Yeah, it might be. Might not be. Hey. Here comes that fellow that made the steel up there. Well, ask him. He'd know. 
Well, he won't tell you. Well, we'll find out. Hey, fella. How are you? Hey. Were you talking to me? Yeah. What's in that funny-looking building? Over there? Nothing. Yeah? What's the idea of the then? You don't want people to go in there. Oh, I'd sure like to see what's in it. I said there's nothing in there. You sure, mister? Yes, I'm asking this. Uh, could we get a pass to go in there, maybe? No. You saw the sign, didn't you? Yeah, it said something about the penalty of the law. You didn't read it very carefully. You didn't read it. I did. Read it again. Wait. The public forbidden to pass beyond this fence under severe penalty. See? I see what he means. He didn't say anything about the law. Ah, uh, that's right. Well, then, there are other countries. Ah. Oh. That's right, huh? No. Not at all. Well, what does it mean, then? I'll give you a little friendly advice. I wouldn't try to find out if I were you. Oh, is that so? Yes. Do you really know what's in there, mister? Yes. What? Nothing. Okay, lad. Let's go get that beer. Well, and of course, you know it was up your way ahead of me. My Cleveland pals weren't in California just for a vacation. There was a bank I'd had my eye on for a while out in Pacific Palisade. It wasn't the first bank that Manucci and Hugh Grant and I had worked to deal on. I didn't go much for this place up on Mount Wilson with nothing in it and a fence around it. Aldo and Hugh, well, after all, could you find a better place to stash away some dough? Nobody could get in, they said. And if we could, well, so I bought the idea finally. And to make a long story short, we took, uh, I think it was $53,000 out of the bank. Fifty-three, fifty-four. dollars Now, what's the difference? It's all gone now. It's a long drive from Pacific Palisades over Sunset Boulevard, then up Beverly Glen to the valley, through the nice to Sunland, down past the sanitarium on Foothill Boulevard to where you turn off on the Angeles Crest Highway. The long drive, especially at one o'clock in the morning. That was when we pulled out of Pacific Palisade. It was summer. If uh, after you turn on the mountain road, you're not allowed to smoke. You see, a fire warden might come along, and those guys can tell somebody smoking in a car a half mile off. They show you in a can for it, forest fires. Well, we didn't want anybody stopping us. It was risky enough anyway, because practically nobody ever drives up there late at night. Well, early in the morning, I mean. Well, we didn't meet anybody. All three of us were jittery with no cigarettes. That road. Stepping up in daylight. Oh, in the dark. It was half past four when we got to the top. The hotel was dark. Cabins were dark. But they died. It was just like stock was died. Why you could put him in reach up and touch him? I remember the old guy in the hundred inch dome. Nothing between us and the sky. And down below, and if you've ever been up there at night, you know what I mean. Just like looking down at the stars. The lights are 17, 18, 19 pounds. Pasadena, Los Angeles, Hollywood, Venice, San Fernando, Culver City, Santa Monica. It makes my hair stand on end right there. And I haven't seen it for never mind how many years. Well, we stumbled through the pitch stop. We got off the path three times, nearly fell down to it. And brother, that would be a fall. We still couldn't risk a cigarette. It was dark. Hugh Grant was in front, then me, then Aldo. We each had three pitches. Hugh had a pair of those big spring wire cutters that would go through a steel cable. All of a sudden, he bumped into the fence. Yeah, what's the matter? Stop, man. Hey, where are you? Stand still, will you? Dark. Shut up. Listen for a minute. Hear anything? No. No? See anything? No? Look. What? The dome over there. You see somebody? No. Them 
two big windows up there. But that big round dome looks like somebody watching us. <laughs> sure does. Now, oh, cut it out. I'm going to try the fence with a cover. Want the flashlight? No. I wish we got. No, forget it. I just don't like that place. Now, get out of the way. Won't you help you? Just keep out of the way. Wire made enough noise to... All right, all right. I'll try another strand. Now, see if you can slide under there, one of you. Me. Okay. No, can't make it yet. I'll try another. I'll look out for your arm there. Now, try. Uh, where do I take off my coat? All right, now, let's see. Well, how about it? He's through. All right. Go ahead. Me? You. All right. Cut another strand here. Can I make it now? I guess so. <clears throat> yeah. Where are you all going? Right here. Come on, you. Hey, slide the beef cases through first. Coming up. Got him? Got him. Now, here I come. All set. All set. I'm all set. I'm as all set as I ever will be, I figure. I don't like any part of this place. I don't like the dark. I don't like the stars up above us. I don't like the lights down below. I don't like the silence. I don't like climbing around the top of a mountain with nothing under me but thin air for a mile or more. All I can hear is Hugh and Aldo in front of me cracking through the weeds, cursing when one of them whacks a shin against a sharp rock. All I can see is two black shapes in front of me. Blacker shape, that's the building, the little house with nothing in it. Aldo and Hugh are panting. 6,800 feet, you know. Your breath is pretty short. It's tough going, especially when you're dragging a briefcase full of money, too. You're scared and sweating and tired. And then all of a sudden, we're under the building. Alongside one of the struts that hold up the little trestle. Loose me up, Aldo. Aldo boosts him up. Hugh's a little guy, he's spry. I'm stronger than I am up there a mile in the air, and I guess he's not as scared as I am. So I look up, and he's sprawling on the trestle with nine million stars behind him, reaching down to me. Grab my hand, Russ. I scrambled up. I never know how I made it either. Here we are in a second. The fellow's up there with us. Now, keep quiet a minute and rest. I'm knocked out. Yeah. Here. Here. You got anything, Dick? Get out of the doorway. Keep the light in there. 
Go ahead. Go on against the far wall. All right. Look out. Where'd they go? Tossed them hard enough to bounce. Move the light around. I can't see a thing. They can't either. They ought to be. The light just kind of seems to stop. Oh, cut it out. There's probably some kind of stuff on the floor. Powdered. Maybe they fell into it. Here, stand to one side, Ross. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going in to look around. You got a gun, Aldo? Yes, this little teddy too. All right, come on. Russ, you stay here and watch and listen. I wouldn't go in there, Hugh. Nobody asked you to. I'm going. Come on, Aldo. Now listen, you. You've got the screaming meanies, too. And come on with that gun. There's nothing in there. But you. Come on, let's get out of here. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Might as well take the dough, too. We can stick it in there. Well, go ahead, Aldo, with the light. You go first. All right. Now stand there and keep your ears. Hey, Hugh. Where are you? I can't see him. Listen, Aldo, don't go in there. I got to. Hey, Hugh. Hugh. Where are you? Listen, Aldo. Keep your eyes and ears open now. We'll be right back. Hey, Hugh. You all right? You coming in, Hugh? Hugh. Aldo. What's in there? Hey, Hugh. Okay, Ross. Something's the matter with him. Here I come. Hugh. Hugh. Hey, Hugh. Aldo. Hey, what's the matter, you two? Hugh. I can see you. You can stand up. They won't come out, I assure you. Come on, son, stand up. I've got a gun. No, you have Stand up. When my friends come out... They're not coming out, my friend. Stand up. You wouldn't believe me when I told you. What's in there? What's in there, I said? I told you there's... Nothing behind that door. My friends went in there. They're not there now. There's nothing in there. You understand me? There's nothing in there. Listen. No, you. I... No, I suppose you do no good to say. Tell me what. I'd better show you. Show me what. Come with me. No. Come with me. I won't. You've got to... Wait. Wait for me. Across the little crescent, away from the door, he closed down my friends. Through another door. from Mars you heard about on the radio. Across the little wooden bridge with the two eyes of the hundred-inch dome staring down at me in a cold wind coming up the other side of the mountain. Not the ramp. Into the dome itself. And up the iron stairs. Follow me. Another ladder. My legs are getting tired. Up. Follow me. Up another dizzy ladder. And another. And across another spidery walk. Here. Sit in this seat. I can't speak. My throat is dry. My legs are trembling. I'm icy cold in that great dome how far above the floor. I can't tell you. Sit still. You won't fall. Why did... Sit did... still, I said. You'll have to be so. Wait. Now 
was not accepted as you. You can look now. Look. At what? Look through the telescope. No. Look, son. What do you see? Stars. Millions of stars. Wait. Look again. What do you see? Nothing. Nothing. What? Now? Stars again. Millions. No, a black cloud. Now? Nothing. That nothing you see is a million light years away. What is it? There's nothing there to see. My friend, there are scores of places in this universe where there's nothing. Far places, near places. Do you understand what I mean? Is that what you meant when you said... When I said there's nothing behind that door? Yes. Well, where... Where... Your friend? Your misguided friend? I don't know. Perhaps... Take your eye from the telescope. Wait. Look now, if you dare. Well, what? Look. Yes. You guess what I saw. You guess what I saw clawing through black clouds of nothing. You guess what eyes I saw? I saw nothing. Yes, the little house is still there on Mount Wilson. You can go look at it if you want to. But don't go too close. Maybe somebody will tell you it's just a place where they store equipment. Maybe. Why do they keep the door locked then? Well, just one other thing. Don't you go around opening doors you don't know anything about. There might be nothing behind one of them. You have just heard Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man to talk to you is Ernest Chappell. And the man who played Aldo Minucci is Martin Lawrence. Pat O'Malley was Hugh Grant and James Van Dyke, the astronomer. The music was composed and played by Gene Parazzo. And now for a word about Quiet, Please, for next week, here is our writer-producer, Willis Cooper. Bill? I've written what I think is an exciting and unusual love story for next week, Chappie. You're welcome as our guest, the charming star of stage and radio, Claudia Morgan. Quiet, Please, for next week is entitled, I've Been Looking for You. Until next week, then, quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.